Hi there, uh, welcome to another text and talk, this time about patch 140, it's finally out, no more dev diaries about it. Let's see what's in it. Uh, I can barely talk, which is why also the Let's Play will have uh, some less episodes. So let's let's just go about it, I have a heavy cold, so let's see, story pack, oh new introduction event for the artisan troop and an encounter for the enigmatic fortress. I haven't encountered any of them, but it sounds pretty cool to have more events. Because events always add to the, to the story, right? And now it's 33 new achievements, not 32 as earlier announced. Uh, no longer possible to build robots on planets belonging to sectors. Oh, that's a big change. I, it's, it's really crazy. I don't really understand it. Hmm, why wouldn't you be able to build robots on planets? No, no robots on planets belonging to sectors. We will find out. I mean, <clears throat> what you should do then is uh, build robots and then declare the planets to say, oh, uh, I think they mean that even if they were under sector control, you could build robots on them, which was, of course, yeah, that needed to be fixed. I never tried that. <laughs> so, a victory event after f defeating the Pretherin Scourge. I'm very curious. I have never met the Pretherin Scourge. <laughs> have you? Can you tell? Can you tell? There should definitely be a victory event after every endgame crisis. I mean, there is one after the Unbidden. It's pretty small, but it's cool. So, very good. New events for new precursor anomalies to help complete the quest chains. Ah, that's nice. I haven't completed any precursor quest chain. So far, there was always like this one thing missing. <laughs> so I'm happy about that, to, to have a, a little, bit, little bit more luck. Change the way the extra dimensionals work. I've talked about this in, in one of the dev diaries. Uh, what it means is essentially, they are not that strong at the start, but they are gaining strength more and more. So you cannot ignore them for a long time, which you could before before you were like strong enough to take them on, but you have to take them on pretty early or they will outgrow you in strength. On the other hand, it's easier to um, to hammer them early if you're lucky. So um, this is kind of a, a double-edged sword and it, it makes the game, it makes it a little bit more logical because yeah, it's not that fixed force that is boom there but it's more like uh, an avalanche <laughs> it's 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 harder to stop at the end <laughs> and will destroy most at the end so this might really destroy the universe if you're <laughs> at the other end of the galaxy and have no like if everyone hates you and, and doesn't give you passing allowance then you have a big problem <laughs> because the AI usually screws that up so balanced evasion capped at 90% yeah that makes sense somehow you should be able to hit something right regular empires now start with 8 pops I don't know what about um, aha. ships minerals and energy reduced so fleet can be large or nice. Um, afterburn is usually auxiliary slot. Yeah, that's. I think that's good because that was logical. They're not really part of the core. They're absolutely optional, so they should be in, ex in an auxiliary slot. Primitive farms can now be upgraded directly to hydrophonics. Yeah, that's... Pirate ships have been reworked slightly and buffed. Oh, <laughs> That early pirate spawn. Now you need probably 300 in strength, not only 200 against them. Primitives are now consistent in how many pops, farms and factories they get on each age of development and get new pops, armies and buildings when advancing through the ages. Oh, that makes sense. 
I like that. Stone Age primitives now generate fewer tile blockers. Oh, that's good because that was really like a lot compared to uh, compared to the primitives. <laughs> Stone Age primitives seem to have more population, which makes no sense, right? Space torpedoes technology requires fusion missiles instead of nuclear missiles. Makes sense too. I mean. <laughs> They are a little bit more advanced, so venerable trade cost reduced from five to four. That makes sense too, because venerable was just too costly. It was just it was a crap pick for what it what it gave you. It was just good for role playing reasons. Now it's a little bit more considerable. Uh, now let's see. From time to time, I might take a. A sip from my herbal tea to extinguish the pain. <laughs> uh, mineral silos are now restricted to one per planet. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. So no more checkerboard building mineral silos. That was kind of ridiculous always, in my opinion, which is one reason I never did it. You could checkerboard your planets like you could make a robot planet and checkerboard it with mineral silos and uh, mining stations, um, mining facilities, and then that would be the optimal mineral planet. Mm. Yeah, not not so much anymore. <laughs> Increased max minerals from mineral silos. Oh, that's good. I like that. So it makes sense to have a mineral silo on every mineral planet at least. Level 3 mineral silo now only provides plus 1 mineral per adjacent tile. Okay, so uh, they are more silo now than than um, buffer, which is why they were so good earlier. Increase protectorate tech discount to 95%, so they are getting the tech for free nearly. <laughs> Protectorates can no longer conduct independent diplomacy. That's good. That was really bad before. Like, if they would declare some wars, they couldn't win and you couldn't, like, help them because it was an aggressive war and then they would just disappear. And that was it. Like, you got that protectorate and it just suicided. <laughs> good luck. That uh, seems to be a past. Uh. Repeatable technologies have their base cost increased from 1,500 to 3,000, and their increasing cost increased from 480 to 1,000. Ah, that that is to to don't to not have the um, the <laughs> absolutely power super domination uh, tech empires at the end of the game. So it it really um, screws up um, the tech strategy. So maybe next let's play, we'll make a tech strategy to try that out. Slave processing plant now gives plus 10% slave of uh, food mineral instead of 5%. Oh, slaves are now being buffed again. Yeah, they were nerfed. That wasn't good. Reduced spawn odds of two worlds. Yeah, there were really many of them. And yeah, I don't know. Um, this is so so for me, but they're now more special, which is probably good for um, for story reasons. Increased frequency of alien pet deposits. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, I rarely found them. So um, um, that's I mean the the alien zoo is not really that powerful the building, so it's okay to increase the frequency of that. Reduced war score costs for planetary and vassalization war goals. Uh, I don't know. Like so, it, this is a buff to military empires. I don't know. Double pre-sentient anomaly spawn chance. Hmm. Seems interesting. Fixed crash to desktop. Always good. But when generating a certain tooltip while the player has no planets. Interesting. That is a very special thing. Pops are no longer upset if an occupier purges pops on one of your planets. That's good. I mean, that would be illogical, right? And components pause. 
<coughs> cost reduced. Ah. So torpedoes get cheaper. And the damage too gets reduced. Interesting. So they were a little bit overpowered, but um, not very uh, not very yeah, very costly on the other hand. So there are now more average weapons. Interesting. AIs. Let's see what the AI was, was changed here. Federation AI is now better at picking war goals for non-conqueror federations will focus on retaking planets and liberating larger countries. That's good. Uh, I like that because Federation AI was really... Uh, we'll see how it works out, but it was really hard if you were in Federation with an AI. That was... Whew, they would uh, make strange movements. <laughs> they would rarely help you, really. They were just doing their thing and if you try to help them they were totally ignorant of it <laughs> so if that it gets improved the all the better sectors major work <clears throat> done to sector ai to make it better at budgeting and utilizing resources oh that's but entirely needed so let's hope it is a major trump card hmm, diplomacy ai will now sometimes give countries that are at war with their rivals and threats uh Makes sense. AI will no longer ask you to become their vessel multiple times in a row. <laughs> of course, that makes sense. AI is now less keen to accept a lot of defensive facts. Oh, that's that's a relief. Slow down AI requests for federation membership association status to prevent message spam. I'm all for that. Fix the bug where AI I would send fleets to deal with pirates only to retreat due to pirates being stronger. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Fix the bug where I, I was trying to build buildings on tiles that had pre engines on them. All right. Um, uh, and user interface. Added a setting to disable all auto-unpausing from pop-ups. That's good. Uh, clicking on some resource icons in top bar no longer opens tabs uh, due to being inconsistent. Oh. Um, what? <laughs> Construction ship now sends notification fleet order finished only when last construction in the queue is finished. That's good. <coughs> that was always like um, this in between messaging was like, what? <laughs> planet view colonize button opens same surface view window as when planet is clicked from expansion planner. Oh, thank God. That is. Uh, and also that added a setting to disable all auto on pausing from pop-ups. Uh, that reminds me, like of of the auto uh, of the auto end round on Civ Five, right? Um, that you could stop the auto end round was really, really the best thing for your play. Close borders and truce are now shown as diplomatic statuses, <laughs> as they should be, and a lot of bug fixes, <clears throat> uh, and. Increased graphics, very good. Better graphics, oh yes. Extra dimensional stack death effects have been updated, very good. <coughs> and new modding opportunities, and oh, performance. I hope it fixes the, the frozen thing everyone's talking about for a reason. I've had that in the early game last time, so... Uh, would be good if that is fixed, or at least if it doesn't happen that often. So, thank you for watching this text and talk. I'm sorry for my voice. Uh, it pains me to say that there might be a pause to the episodes of Snail Wars. Uh, that's not only figuratively, because it really pains me to say something. But I just wanted to bring this out for you. Happy gaming to you. See you in the next episode. This is Emmanuel Kant signing out.